So, uh, settler colonialism normalizes the continuous settler um, occupation and it exploits lands and resources to which indigenous peoples have a genetic relationship right native people and the land you know they talk about uh especially when we were reading the pima uh, creation story or the uh, every little hurricane there is a physical um uh thing with the land with indigenous people and the same with hawaii if you check out any of their cultures and any of the ways in which they've you know worshipped or the way they talk about the land um Oh man, there's all kinds of different stories in Hawaii about uh, the volcanoes and how the volcano is also a spirit within the land. It's just, anyway, long story short, um, when we start taking these lands, we're taking more than lands. We're taking the spirit. We're taking something from these people. And it's, this is just, this is where we have, uh, where it becomes an issue. We're just taking so much that it's not just the land. It's the soul and it's the spirit. So uh, some examples are Dutch control over South Africa, French control over Algeria, British control over India and Fiji, that for sure. Um, and then French control over Tahiti. And you'll think of the French, uh, French Polynesian. Uh, so anyway, these are different ways in which we have uh, stepped up and pushed the earlier uh, settlers out to make money because the land is beautiful or whatever. Okay. So more vocabulary. <laughs> so exploitation colonialism is the national uh, economic policy of conquering a country to exploit its population. So not just taking the land, but now you're exploiting the population for your gains. Okay, so using the population as labor and its natural resources as raw material. Okay, so not only are you settling on this land, you're exploiting it, right? Okay, so it involves fewer colonists and focuses, focuses, so fewer people coming in, but it focuses on the exploitation of the natural resources or the population as labor, okay? Typically the benefit of the motherland or the people who are, you know, settler, settling in, so, okay. All right. That's a lot, but you're kind of getting it. So now let's ask that question of legality versus morality, okay? Just because it is legal does not mean it's morally right, okay? Remember our vocabulary before we have the morals, now we're looking at the legality of it. So think about ways in which something might be legal, but maybe might not be moral. And some of you will have all kinds of different opinions on this, right? What one person's moral is, right? Their moral assumptions, the ways in which they grew up might not be someone else's. Okay. So that, you know, for uh, racism and slavery, these things were legal at one point, not necessarily considered moral. Okay. So this is where this idea of uh, legality, which is the quality or state of being in accordance with law, all right, obligations imposed by law, okay, so you can think of many different ways in which something might be legal, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's moral. The problem with that is morality, because for every person, morals are different, which is why sometimes they will have laws, because not all people have the same morality, all right, over time, we start to go, okay, maybe we're going to take that law out because it's not necessarily healthy for all peoples or whatever. Okay. Like slavery. Okay. So I don't want to get into a huge discussion on that part, but it is, it is a, it is a non, it's not a, it's not a black and white. It's not a black and white again, because we throw in that morality, which some people, you know, to them what's right and what's wrong versus someone else. So to be honest with you, sometimes laws benefit us because some people's uh, uh, opinion on morals uh, then becomes too overarching into other people's lives, right? So there's those kind of issues too. So this is a very, it's a very delicate thing. And this is why we have laws. This is why we have, um, you know, voting and stuff to try and make sure that we try and keep it in as balanced as we can. Human beings are not perfect. And we're slowly trying to be understanding of humanness, equality, and freedoms. Okay. Whew. Freedom for all, right? We're working on it. Okay. 
And now I believe last but not least, this is indoctrination. Oh, indoctrination is the one. Uh, education is indoctrination. Okay. So, all right. When I get a little bit into uh, the taking of the land, we're going to talk about this. But indoctrination is the process of teaching a person or group to accept uh, a set of beliefs uncritically. All right. Indoctrination is like, sure, okay, I'll just do what you got to say so I can be a part of you. All right. So education is indoctrination is a really good video. That's the one that talks about um, the thing I was talking about earlier. So and I do have to throw this in there because I remember hearing this and for some reason this shocked the hell out of me. Christopher Columbus never landed in North America. I watched this on an expedition unknown and I'm sitting there like rewinding and fast forwarding. I'm like watching Columbus do his little thing. I'm like, he never landed in America. What the fuck? How have I gone my whole life? I've, I'm not a history person as you can see. And when I found that out, I was kind of mad because I'm pretty sure I have really believed that he landed in America. And maybe it's because we celebrate his, um, yeah, landing in America. Anyway, so these are things that like, even as an adult with multiple degrees, you know, I, I still find new things that really shock me. And that's what it is. Our history and the way we do things, the way we educate, we educate we kind of educate to deceive because if you think about it, school, especially elementary school and high school, it's a factory. It's a factory that doesn't necessarily make money, but the people then will make money. The idea of education is to create factory workers and people who buy things from the factory. Okay. So it is a machine that's capitalism. That's just what it is. Make the thing so that I can buy it. Who's making the thing? Okay, and who's willing to clean up after making said thing? Okay, so this is why the education system is incredibly flawed because it is systemically racist. And what it does is start to weed certain people out and push some people up and push some people down, and they do it on purpose. Yeah, so. I'm trying to hopefully get you to be mindful of this. And as everyone, as you can see right now in this, in this really great time, actually, this is the greatest year I think humanity's seen in a very long time about waking up and seeing certain things. So I'm very excited to know that we're all working together to understand equality and where there are issues that we need to address and fix. The problem is, as you're going to see in some of those videos that I post, because of these things that have been put in place for so long and it has been its own machine and doing its own thing, whether or not we've abolished certain laws, it doesn't mean these things are still in place. So because of that, we're trying to like catch it and, and fix it as best we can. Okay. All right. I know that was very vague, <laughs> but I think you're going to understand when you watch all these videos, you go, oh, okay, I see what she's trying to say here. So watch those and it'll make more sense. All right. So real quick, we're going to cover both taking the land and why Mo in taking the land. The biggest thing that we're trying to talk about when we're talking about indoctrination is farmers versus hunters. Take a minute and tell me, do you need more land to hunt or do you need more land to farm? Take a minute. Okay. So exactly. You actually need more land to hunt. What were indigenous people on this, on, in America? Who were they? Were they farmers or were they hunters? Well, they were hunters. And if you're a hunter, do you need more land or do you need less land? You need more land. Well, here's the problem. I want said land. And you know what? I'm going to solve this problem by teaching you how to farm. And if I teach you how to farm, then you don't need all of this land in here. Let me just take it off of your hands so that you can enjoy your new farm life. Yes. Do you see how they are manipulating the situation, right? So it's either go peacefully and we'll help you out, right? Or we're going to make this a little harder on you. So if you teach indigenous people to not need to hunt and instead to farm, now, have you not only indoctrinated them into your society to do what you want, and now you've civilized them, you can take their land. That was the ultimate point, and that was the point of the Dawes Act. 
All right, I'm going to take a look at my notes. So this is the most messed up part, is we're using education to manipulate. Please go back and check out that uh, picture of American Progress and tell me what is she holding in her hand as she is pulling the wires and um, you know all this new technology across the land as they're pushing us down you know all the indigenous people what is she holding in her hand not it's not a Bible it's a it's an education book it's a it's an it's a book for education all right and that's that is literally the main point that they're trying to make right there is they're using education to push back and so here's the thing I'm all I'm all for you know learning and all this stuff but when you're using it for evil then I have a little bit of a problem right okay so that being the case if you teach these people to farm right you can take their land and you can do more by saying here's the right way to do things so now you're also cultivating the land and getting the people to join you right Okay, um, when we talk about also um, uh, cultural appropriation, uh, you're going to notice that uh, the lady does talk about the difference between uh, cultural appropriation and uh, indoctrination, right? It's where you're kind of forced, you know, you're kind of forced to be within this culture for your own survival. So you're wearing all the clothes and you're doing all the things and talking all these ways because you need to be a part of in order to survive versus appropriation where you take just the little things that you like from uh, like a minority group and say, mm, I'm going to make some money from this. Okay. There's a huge difference. Okay. So, um, again, look at that picture of um, indoctrination and that's pretty much like the biggest part of this whole thing in taking the land, understanding how we acquired it and what are the manipulative things that we did. And also what were the ways in which people were talking about these indigenous peoples? Were they considered civilized or uncivilized, right? Human beings, in fact, who knew the land better than we'd ever understood it, took care of it better, loved it better, were literally in spirit with said land and yet we were calling them uncivilized while we went and took the land and pretty much, let's be honest, we've destroyed land. Look at all the concrete out there. <laughs> like there is a lot of concrete out, out there, okay? You know, land's still trying to come up between the cracks. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else. I think that was it. So go ahead and take a look back again at that. Okay, so now that we've talked a bit about taking the land, we're gonna talk about why Mo? Why Mo is literally the reason why I do this entire class. It is my favorite thing to talk about because we bring up the American dream. No? Okay, so <laughs> with the Why Mo, the case against the Longs, here's the idea. And the summation I kind of put here is that <sighs> we want land so that we can manipulate it, okay? And we want to. And, and do what we can for our own liking, okay? And when you took the quiz, you saw a bunch of different things about um, how um, the ways in which uh, we want to either take care of the land. So, okay, let's kind of go back a little bit. I have a lot of notes here that I'm gonna cover really quick, okay? Um, first and foremost, I think the biggest thing to understand is that in America, Think about the suburban house, the suburban life. This every house looks the same and the lawns are so green and all this stuff. And think about property value. Now, when I grew up, I grew up in paradise. So, our, our, you know, it's paradise. It was regular, you know, we didn't have the, you know, suburban type of life. We just kind of had some roads. You went down and you got to your house. Okay. And my neighbor up the street lived in a mobile home. And with said mobile home, in front she would have a mannequin just sitting on a chair. And then sometimes it was looking out into the street, and other times it was wearing different outfits. My neighbor would dress this mannequin up and have her reenact weird things every day, every single day. And she had a boat out in her yard and all this. She was a fantastic, wonderful woman, absolutely loved her but she was destroying her property value with the ways in which she was setting up her yard. 
isn't that wild to think about? And when you talk about real estate and all this stuff, and when you start to see in really, uh, you know, junky neighborhoods, the nice houses start to build, you know, we're buying land and making it better, right? It starts to add value to it. So these are not bad things. I watch HTV, HGTV like it's crack, okay? I love it. I am addicted to getting things to look pretty. So I'm probably a hypocrite here. I don't know if I had a lawn. Yes, I would absolutely want it green, but to what extent? Okay. And so as we read through this, uh, what kind of lawn does this guy have? It's pristine. It's beautiful. It's perfect. He loves it. It's great, but he spends way too much time trying to make it look great. Okay. And why does he do this? Because growing up, his dad didn't do crap with his lawn. So it looked like crap. And the neighbors would drive by really slowly going, bro, mow your lawn, please, right? So the neighbors were actually having an issue with his father. So because of this, he's like, I think I'm going to like actually have a really nice yard. Well, then as he's doing this, he's starting to see how much money, how much time, how much effort he's putting in and put wasting as he feels to keep this lawn looking pristine. He's not cultivating the land. He's manipulating the land and there's a difference. Okay. So he goes into a very long spiel about it and please read through because he does a very, very good job of really visualizing this way in which he is working with the land. And that's kind of, I think the main point, how he's trying to just really understand the power of this earth. Okay. Um, so he goes through all this again, all this, these are all my notes for it. Um, his idea is to try and make it look perfect. And at some point he just says, fuck it. Right. And it's, it's funny how he starts to understand this American value we put on lands when in other places, it's like, let's just put up a brick wall. So people don't even have to ask any questions. Right. For us, we want it open. We want everyone to see what we have. Isn't this great? It's wonderful. All right. It's kind of weird because here, uh, in where I grew up, there was always fences. And my friend in Kansas and even in Hawaii, there weren't fences anywhere. I'm like, how, how do you know where your property ends and where it begins, right? It was just this big open space, okay? And I think that was just the, the main idea. It's just look at all this beautiful space and land we have, okay? So anyway, the whole point behind all of this is understanding that we don't use land for what land could be used for. And though we do in a sense when it comes to farming and stuff, but we also abuse the land, right? There are some farmers who do a really good job of, you know, taking care of the land and keeping it going. And, and it, there's so much that goes into this. So I, I don't want to say all farmers or anything like that, but for the most part, unfortunately, we, we were not really told how necessarily to take care of the land that we're on right now, you know, unless, unless it's your career or something. So anyway, Long story short, <laughs> with all of this, uh, the biggest thing I want you to get from all this is understanding, like, we have this American dream about who we are and what we're supposed to be and all these things. And where's all this coming from, right? We talk about, you know, who we are as writers and these things people are telling us how we should be and what we need to do and all these things. And it, I think now's a good time to start questioning all these things, right? I kind of want you to question right now, like, who are you as a writer? You know, what, what is your ultimate purpose with this? Is it communication? And if it's communication, how are you going to do it to the best of your ability so that you are always understood? Okay. And I know you're like, how did that go from here to there? But I got it right. Um, so the biggest point that I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand is the ways in which we are manipulative, the way we've been manipulated, and how we do that to things around us, whether it's the land, whether it's other people, how we see people, how we talk to people, how we talk about people, um, and how we talk about the land. Uh, we all know, uh, you know, it, I'm going to be honest with you, and all the research that is out there, there is climate issues, okay? And there is a point at some, t at some point we have to go, man, it doesn't look like things are going well for the planet. Um, and so these are points where we have to go, at what point do we take a step back and look around and see the things around us and kind of go, do we change? Do we change the way we thought we were supposed to be in this American dream way? Um, you know, there's actually science behind how, how much, uh, um, how bad it is for the environment to have kids. And I was just with my friend literally two days ago 
And I, I looked at the, the things all the kid had and all the plastics and all these things. And I thought, holy crap. And as if, if I were a parent, I'd be like, give me all the things so I could keep the kid, you know, educated and, and, and calm and all this stuff. And so and I'm just, I've been thinking a lot about how do we change the things that we've been doing in order to save ourselves, the planet, the people around us? Um, I don't know. These are just big questions I have, and, and that's what I'm hoping that this does, is to give you an opportunity to ask questions. So when the research project comes, you'll be able to go, I have a question about this. What's an answer to it? And I'm not talking about, I don't give a shit about exercise and how good it is for you. I get that every single semester. Forgive me if that was a, a topic one of y'all were picking. It, this is not a personal attack. This is just, I want something deeper. I need something deeper from you. And that's why we're giving you this project, this narrative, to really expand your mind, to think beyond all the things you thought you knew from that bullshit education that we all get because that's what is in doctrine in our society. That's how we're told to be taught. I was taught how to teach high school and I couldn't do it. It's not it's not for me. I believe in the truth and I believe you guys all deserve it and the opportunity to try and figure out answers to these these very gray questions okay so again uh we'll we'll talk a little bit more about the research as we move forward for now we're just talking about the narrative i just want to hear about who you are as a writer don't get confused on this um anyway so hopefully with all this information again check out all the readings and all of the books they all have a reason for uh for being and i'm going to check really quick make sure i didn't miss anything as we scroll through i think that was it so ladies and gentlemen have fun. Good luck. It's a big week, but you can handle it. And next week, I look forward to reading all of your narratives. So have a good night.